but she wanted to use all of her curling irons. Yeah, bring your own. I brought my own curling iron just in case so I wouldn't have to borrow anyone else's. Happy Valentine's Day to you. I am here to um, give you my perspectives on the week. This is week four, part two. Let's talk about what's going on with the drama this week. We have two one-on-ones, a group date, and lots of hot topics. Welcome to Reality TV Therapy with me, Dr. Diane. To do a little bit of light housekeeping, obviously today is Valentine's Day, and I am so honored, actually, that you would spend even a portion of your time coming to YouTube, checking out my video. It's also Love is Blind Day. They're dropping season six that was filmed in Charlotte, North Carolina, and I'm going to get to that too, but it's just a, literally a crazy week for me. I have my big volunteer weekend um, down in Cambria. I'll tell you more about that, but I'm going to be gone till Monday, um, and then I'll catch up as soon as I can. At this point, we have 14 women left, but what I love about the season is that we're not missing anything. It's Production is pretty tight this time. We're moving through rose ceremonies. As I said, none of the rose ceremonies have been canceled, but we're certainly seeing some drama, and I want to talk about that because everyone thought, oh good, Sydney's gone, but her legacy continues. And in this latest rose ceremony, we're seeing Leah taking up time talking to Joey like, love me, my girl, Sydney. Um, she, her and I will be friends forever. Why would you take your time to talk about that? But something's going on with Maria, and I want to get to the bottom of this. So we saw her, right? She's melting down. Medina is helping her. Um, but then when they're all standing there, Leah's saying, well, obviously, because now she's anxious, she hasn't gotten a rose, and she's saying, you know, Joey, don't be dumb. It's my biggest nightmare to go home. Obviously, Leah gets the rose, and unfortunately, we see two good people go home, Edwina and Allison. I really liked Edwina. She had great energy, right, and the whole paintball. Um, so much fun. And now Maria's going to have to cope without Allison. First without her sister and now without um, Allison. Okay, I'm going to put the curling iron away. I <laughs> don't think we need that anymore. We're off to Spain, which I also think is great marketing. Because if you don't know, The Bachelor gets lots of secondary promotion kind of money from these host cities. But the women are all in the town, which you just got to love, because what else do you do while somebody's on a date? You want to be able to explore. But Joey shows up on his Vespa, uh, looking great, and he has a moment with the women, right? They're drinking sangria, they're talking about what he likes to do when he travels. But the women now are feeling the stress, no doubt, because what happens in the seasons, if you don't get a one-on-one, -on -one, I think it's by week six, week seven, it's not looking good. And that's when the heat's, um, the hot water boils up. I have oftentimes talked about in attachment theory that you don't see somebody's real, true, authentic style, attachment style, until you see them in hot water. And this is what's happening because people are now moving ahead. And all the women are going to be jealous, right? Kelsey T is talking about, oh, I want that to be me. Jess is talking about it, but all the women are going to be talking about it because only one person's going to go on the date. I do love that Joey himself comes to announce it. It mixes us up. It's just a little bit better than all the women waiting for the date card. He's in it. Um, they jump. Uh, him and Kelsey jump. Uh, she jumps on the back of the Vespa, and I think we are off to a great start. But here's something I don't know if you notice. Let me know in the comments that Maria... While I thought, uh, was it week two, where it was great that she kind of brought up in the group, hey, who brought my name up? But now I don't think it's so great because this is actually getting Leah more pissed. Like she's talking about the group date card, right, that she threw in the fire. And I don't think that's such a smart move. I do think there's something going on. And um, even though the followers like Maria, she's rubbing women the wrong way. Okay, but let's get to Kelsey A, because I thought she really deserved some good attention, right? She was the first woman who brought, uh, night one, she brought the voodoo doll, and she had mentioned early on that her mother had passed away. 
Um, but if you notice during the date, this is just classic bachelor setup, that there's always an old couple somewhere, and on the date, they ask you a question about your relationship, and then they have to tell you about their story of love. It's just, it never fails. Sweet, um, but a little awkward, right? Like, we're just hooking up. We're not even hooking up. We're just like at the beginning phases, so it's a little bit cringe. Having said that, they make the most of that. I love this picnic date. They're drinking wine. They're talking about how nice it is to find somebody that you can travel with. And um, Kelsey says that she's not falling in love, but she's tripping in love. I'm like, here I'm thinking of the Fergie song, Clumsy, like tripping. I thought it was sweet. But this young woman really had a significant loss, and it puts things in perspective, right? Her mother died of cancer. She's only 25, and she said this was already 10 years ago, so she's been without her mother since she was 15. And my husband and I watched this together. My husband's wife died of cancer and left uh, two sons who were 12 and 15. And ugh, I just, you know, we both embrace and kind of like find ourselves crying because it's just so sad, right? And and all it, it kind of just dissipates all the rest of the silliness. But I'm grateful that we get to see this. And again, Joey is right there, doesn't skip a beat. Thank you. And you know, he thanks everyone for sharing, recognizing how hard this is. And he really does know how to hold space. Just uh, really lovely, because what else can you actually say? Okay. And of course, she gets a rose as predicted. Let's move on to the group art date. So the theme is just Leah, let it go. She She's obviously salty, saying it would be great if Maria wasn't there. Ugh, it's just getting so apparent. There's just so much competition, and, and it's not great. But, like, it reminds me of, of the talent contest. This isn't really about talent, and Leah's like, oh, I'm an artist. It, it's really going to be about who joins best with Joey. And like, you have to understand the assignment. And Jess actually did. She understood the assignment. The assignment was draw something that describes in words how you feel about Joey. And she chose to do the engagement ring, which I thought was brilliant. So um, it looks like that woman decided who won and therefore Jess gets extra time where they're doing the body painting. I don't know. I still don't feel a connection between Jess and Joey, but he's he's a great sport and he's kind of in it. Okay, and they have a makeout sesh. Now the evening portion, Joey um, pulls some of the women. You know, I do like that he's again sensitive, and because he's been on the other side in charity season, he's asking, "How are you? How is it going?" Okay, back to Maria. I have to give her some credit. She really does know how to make the most of her moment. It's this is not her first rodeo. But she knows that she needs to open up, right? There's been all the stress the previous week of the two-on-one and that this is her moment. So I track these stories, though, and I'm well aware of editing versus trauma. Okay, so two things could be happening here. The editing, the story when she's talking about her mother and the cement truck, and then her mother really wasn't there. She grew up with men. It felt really disjointed. I'm like, is that an editing issue? Because like something doesn't come together for me. I'm sitting here wondering, do you not have a connection with your mother because she's disabled? If she broke every bone in her body, has she suffered some major physical handicap? Um, she talked about her mother being depressed. Of course, that's common after a major trauma. But it, does she have a mental illness? And that's why she's not connected so it lacked something for me. Again, I, I couldn't quite wrap my head around this story, but sometimes, the second, my second thought was, is this trauma? It happened to her when she was an infant, a baby. Can you imagine like a cement truck coming down on you? This is going to affect your attachment because the first two years of life are crucial. So now mom is, you know, probably in, um, the ICU, she separated. This is really early trauma. And sometimes as trauma goes, your story lacks cohesion because the way the brain works and our memories, it doesn't really quite come together. But here's what's significant to me about Maria's share is that she says that she's a daddy's girl. Okay. Did her dad overcompensate? Um, 
again, did somebody else step in? What's going on? And then she's like saying, well, dad stayed with mom, but I still don't quite get, are they working their way back? There's something that just didn't come together. So she is sharing. Uh, Joey certainly is attracted to her. She is sexy and flirty. Um, I, you know, he noticed her right when she got out of the limo. And um, he's probably not going to choose her for the final person. But he's sending a message to the group uh, that she is significant. Therefore, why do they go through all of this? But again, it, she's just irking people the wrong way. But I thought it was interesting to understand a little bit more about Maria because some people are saying, and I agree, there's just sort of like a not quite understanding how other people are responding to her. And that's a big theme. But there's lots of family history here, which no excuses, but can explain certain behaviors. Okay. Next, we've got the one-on-one -on -one that goes to Rachel. I really like Rachel. I mean, she is so unproblematic. Um, they're adorable. They both have their shorts on. There's the flamenco dancing. This seems like perfect that Rachel was the one who really wanted this. I just think it is a great fit. And then Joey in his shorts and those shoes, his you know, dancing shoes. Uh, nobody would wear those with shorts. And I just thought it was kind of funny. But it, the, the meme is like, this is what happens when you don't date, you don't dress your husband and he looks like Joey showing up like that. But he does, he's just self-effacing, right? He's just so cute about that. And um, the dancing together was really um, looking at each other, the eye contact. I just really enjoyed it. Um, we get to the evening portion and there isn't a big reveal right? Maybe Rachel doesn't have trauma. And if you don't have trauma, I prefer like not making up some traumatic story, which I've heard people in the past have, but she talks about nursing and how that's hard for people. And Joey, again, doesn't skip a beat. He's just so appreciative and so there and recognizing that her job is important to her. Okay. I now want to get to my theory about the three types of women that we see on the show. They're the serious types of women who I think can be problematic in some ways, might have some underlying anxious attachment style, some insecurities. Then we see sort of the fun ones. And then we see, as I say, the unproblematic queens. So what's going on here? Let's talk about the serious types because these are the ones who are really dragging the season down. Okay. In that bucket, I would say Sydney, Leah, even Jess. Um, and they're joining with one another. Some people are calling them the mean girls. Um, but the problem is they're taking the process very seriously. And that's why I'm saying, is this more of an anxious attachment style, right? I take love very seriously. I take being on the show very seriously. And the problem with Sydney, um, somebody had said in the comments, they're calling her a cry bully. I'm like, well, that's kind of an interesting name. Um, but but more like, you know, I've been hesitant to use the word um, narcissist because that is also very loaded. But these women literally think that this is the process and I need to like enforce what is right. I am, and, and maybe um, it's like they're a little bit delusional because it's like I think think that I have a connection with Joey, but then I also wonder if I have a connection with Joey and do I need to like save Joey? But every season we see someone like this. And in particular, Leah right now is taking that role. Um, but we've seen people like this before. Even I could remember in Nick Vial's season, Taylor Nolan, very popular woman who she came for Corinne and saying she wasn't emotionally intelligent. It's the same thing with Sydney, like trying to tell people what gaslighting is. But the problem is something called confirmation bias. I have a thought in mind, like Maria is manipulative. Maria is evil. She said last, you know, last night that, or two nights ago, excuse me, that she was the devil. These serious kind of allegations and bullying and not realizing that that's just your perspective because they can't see the whole thing in its entirety. And, and Maria, by the way, is not totally innocent either, um, but they're getting jealous and that's what's happening. These serious types are getting jealous of Maria and it's just not a good luck. Okay, next are the fun 
women, right? And I would actually say Maria's in that, you know. Again, her story doesn't come together because she's saying, well, because I have this serious thing that I like to take life in a, in a fun way. But she is hard to pin down a little bit. I think Edwina falls into, I think Autumn is actually kind of fun. Even Lauren, Allison's sister, right? She came out with the beer cans. And I think those women um, kind of remind me again of Corinne, um, not taking the process so seriously. I'm not sure if they're the ones who always end up winning, um, but it sort of reminds me of even Victoria Fuller, who all the women were intimidated by because she was very attractive. And I actually put Maria in that category. Next, we have the drama-free, unproblematic queens. And in that category, we've got Daisy, Lexi, Rachel, Kelsey A, Kelsey T. Even though she's anxious, she's staying in her own lane. And mind you, she's also 31, hasn't brought up her age. These are the women who I think are there for the right reasons. Um, these are the type of women who usually go far in the season. Okay. So the drama is heating up because, one, uh, the seriousness of it. Two, the bean girls or the serious girls are overextending themselves and they don't see how hypocritical they're being. We're going to get to that in a little bit, which is where we get to in the rose cocktail ceremony. Okay. We have to talk about something here, which is Daisy, though. I have never seen this before. Let me know if you have. But Joey comes to Daisy, and in, with so much sweetness and earnestness, he essentially is giving her a message like, sweetie, you're going to watch this back, and you might feel bad because I'm connecting with other people. And he said something like, you know, until I find my wife, um, you know, this is part of the process, right? But essentially, he's saying that the root of it is that I have the right intentions. And what better way to have confidence to have the person choose you and the sea of all these amazing people? Right there. I'm like, game over. I've never heard a bachelor say that. Like, he's foretelling this, that um, if I choose you, right, because he said my wife is here, that I don't want you to feel bad watching this back because this is the process I'm in and I'm here for the right reasons and um, I'm here for goodness. So I, I just haven't seen that before. Now, I could be wrong. The producers could be fooling us again. I've been wrong before, but I really thought that he's lovely. Just checking with her, how are you doing? I've been on that side. I hope you're doing okay. And um, if Daisy isn't the F1. I'm thinking this is a bachelorette edit. She could be the next bachelorette if she gets her heart broken or leaves or something. But um, obviously the producers like Daisy. She's doing great on social media. Um, I'm watching her stories. Uh, well done. Well done. I just think she is, um, again, that unproblematic queen. All right. But the producers are going hard on this season. Here's the problem, what people don't realize, and maybe just doesn't realize, that the producers tell you what order you can meet with Joey. It's like 9-1. They're telling you, go now, so some people don't get time. And Jess now is taking this personally and seeing that Maria is stopping her from getting to Joey when that's not true. But Jess, First off, you just had extra time with him on the group date, and you were the one, Jess, night one, who said, hey, I know I had extra time with him, but I interrupted someone, and the woman said, um, right early on, night one, she said, that's disrespectful, and she said, but I would do it again. So Jess, come on. The lack of self-awareness here. Okay, so in the meantime, you know, if with all the time that we're now creating this drama between Jess and Maria, could, uh, you know, could Jess have just gone up to Joey and said, hey, I need to steal you for a minute? Because it's just silly. Okay. It's just silly, silly, silly. All right. And um, here's the thing. Back to Maria. I'm Again, I think it might work as a technique when you don't know who snitched on you to bring it back to the group, but now she keeps bringing it back to the group, um, saying, hey, you know, what was wrong with me getting extra time with Joey? You know, I know I have the rose, but that felt 
that felt bad. It felt like this could have been a private conversation. And because now I've seen Maria do it more than once, but Maria's not so innocent because when she does interrupt Caitlin, she uses this, hey girl, love you. And it's like, love ya? And then Caitlin comes back and says, yeah, she interrupted me, but she did so nicely. And it's it's just, it feels like, ugh, that's not a good read. Um, recognize what you're doing. And um, I'd like to see more accountability for all these women. And I also know, are we going to get it? You know, on the women tell all, I'd love it if Sydney talked up about that. I'd love it if Leah talked about that. I'd love it even if Maria talked about that. Don't know if she's going to be there or not. But those are the kinds of things that I think would bring this more maturity, okay? We've got young women in their 20s and 30s, and we know all of this is kind of competitive, but I really just want to see um, more healing conversations. I really just want to see more healing conversations. Okay, now let's go to the final rose ceremony. Uh, he gives Jen, I, I pay attention to order Jen, the first row, Kelsey T, Daisy number three, Leah, Lexi, Caitlin, and then of course Maria, Kelsey A, already had roses. And then the 10th person, Jess, gets what we call the producer's rose. There's drama there. They want to keep it around. As I said, I don't think we need it, but here we are. And then of course, Medina and Autumn go home. I really liked Autumn and Medina. I thought she handled herself so well, but we're back to connections and it's just not everybody can be that connected. Let's talk about the previews for next week. We're going to be heading west to Montreal. I think they're making a second stop in Canada. Uh, we're going to see in the previews, uh, it looks like at some point Maria's probably going to get a one-on-one -on -one because it looked like that was her in the helicopter. Daisy, does she get another one-on-one? -on -one? Is that a hometown? I can't tell with the snow and them on horseback and in a hot tub. Um, Jess continues to be there, but again, I don't feel like there's any connection. So uh, let me know what you're thinking because I just want to look at what works, what doesn't. I think what really works is to be an unproblematic queen. I think if you want to be the fun girl, uh, you got to have some breadth too and some depth. And uh, we will see what plays out. And that is a wrap for this week. See you soon.